be united so much like you and I, Father and Son, like God Almighty and Jesus Christ are united. It says in that way, the explosive power of the Almighty God will keep on flowing. There will be no restraint or restriction in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. In First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. That you all speak the same thing. That's the unity is calling us to. And when, if you're united like that, it is not that we're only united during the church service. At home, we're united. On the streets, while you're walking on the street, you're a member of deeper life. You're a member of the body of Christ. And you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether you are in church or you're on the road, you're united with Christ. You're united with the body of Christ. You're united with the believers. Whether it is the end of the month or the third week of the month, there's that unity that you all speak the same thing. Whether you're in the privacy of your home, or you are in the public, anywhere you are, what comes out of your mouth? The thoughts in your heart, the plans that you have, and your interaction with people, what to share with people, what to talk to people, what to instruct other people about. It is that unity. It is not a religious unity, Sunday, Sunday unity. And then Monday to Saturday, there's no unity division during the week and then unity on Sunday not at all if we're Christians we're Christians 24 by 7 24 hours of the day and seven days of the week and all the days of the month that's Christianity the unity is not a kind of uh, you know denominational unity it's not a kind of tribal unity it's not a kind of uh, you know educational unity it is a unity that binds us with the blood of Jesus Christ and that unity is there and it said that you all speak the same thing and then it says that there be no division among you but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment in the same judgment means in the same evaluation when something happens my mind is your mind your mind is my mind and it's the mind of Christ there is that mind of Christ that saturates everyone I think like you think you think like I think you'll not say I think differently I beg to differ I beg to disagree I beg to go this other direction I beg to think another way there is this unity of mind a unity of thought a unity of faith a unity of purpose a unity of vision a unity of drive a unity of existence we're existing here for a purpose and that purpose is all united together and it is that kind of faith that will do wonders in our midst and this great thing the Lord has started will never end in Jesus name I said it will never end in Jesus name I come to number two the mountain moving power of united unspotted concourse number one was the multiplied mighty power of united unwavering Christians unwavering Christians number two is the mountain moving power of united unspotted concourse on spotted concourse from this time on in the strength of the Lord by the power of the Lord according to the promise of God according to the covenant at Calvary we are more than concourse in Jesus name any concourse there I didn't hear you when I said we're more than concourse I said we're more than concourse in Jesus name you turn to the right, we're going to conquer. When we turn to the left, we're going to conquer. We're moving forward, we're going to conquer. I look all around me and we're going to conquer. It is Monday, I'm going to conquer. It is Tuesday, I'm going to conquer. Wednesday, Thursday, I'm conquering. And Thursday and Friday, Saturday, I'm conquering. And Sunday, the sunny day, we're conquering in Jesus' name. 
a conqueror is a conqueror every time. In the night, a conqueror is a conqueror. In the day, a conqueror is a conqueror. In church, a conqueror is a conqueror. Back at home, a conqueror is a conqueror. In an office, a conqueror is a conqueror. And then when you're on the road and you're traveling, a conqueror is a conqueror. You get to the village, a conqueror is a conqueror. All the days of your life. Look at you. Look at that brother here. That is brother conqueror. I said that is brother conqueror. Look at that sister there. Is sister conqueror in Jesus' name? And I'm telling you that this is a family of conquerors, a family of conquerors, a family of conquerors, and nothing will ever conquer you again in Jesus' name. And when, anywhere you see a child, of, you'll, you'll see us, you see the mark of the conqueror on us. The mark of the conqueror on us. The way we stand, there's a way the conqueror stand. There's a way the conquerors dress. There's a way the conquerors look. There's a way the conquerors talk. We don't talk, we don't talk, you know, or doubt, or believe, and shaking, and trembling, and timidity, and fear. When conquerors talk, we know they are conquerors. And by the grace of God, the spirit of the conqueror, the spirit of the conqueror will fill you for this day in Jesus' name. The mountain moving power of united or spotted conquerors. Let's let's come to Romans, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 37. It says, Nay, in all these things, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us paul the apostle could have said i'm an apostle paul the apostle could have said i'm a commissioned man i am ordained i'm appointed to be an apostle to the gentiles and he could have said i've gone through this i've gone through that he could have said nay in all this sin, i am more than a conqueror he would have been courage if he said i am more than a conqueror but he didn't say i he said we it's a family of, of faith in the family of the faithful is the children of God every one of us as we come together and you believe in that Christ who died on the cross of Calvary you believe in that Christ who washed all your sins away you believe in that Christ who translated you out of the kingdom of darkness onto the kingdom of his dear son you believe in that Christ who says you are now members of his body bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh he says you are part of the bride of Christ and so he joins us together he binds us together he links us together he, he makes us cleave unto him and cleave to each other and then he says nay whatever is happening nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ through him that loved us and I pray that the spirit of the conqueror will abide with you all the days of your life in Jesus name let's come back to this in Matthew chapter 18 verse 19 Matthew chapter 18 verse 19 we need to have uh, you know some understanding here Matthew chapter 18 verse 19 he tells us these are the very words of the Lord Jesus Christ Matthew 18 verse 19 he says again which means he's told us something in addition to what I said before again I say unto you in addition to all the privileges you have, all the opportunities you have, all the other promises I've given you, again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth, it's not talking okay about when we get to heaven. You know, some people say a victory. When we get to heaven, it will be marvelous. Yes, we know that. But on earth, if any two of you shall agree as touching anything that you demand, that you ask, that you make request of here on earth, it says it shall be given unto them. And if that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Two of them, two of them, if two of us shall agree as touching anything, the mountain moving power of united, 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 unspotted, conquerors. When it says two of us, which two is he referring to? Let me show you. Uh, to start with, Luke chapter 1, two of us. Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1. We're reading from verse 5 and verse 6. 
there was in the days of Herod, king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the, of the cause of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughter of Aaron, and her name was, tell me, tell me, Elizabeth. And then verse 6, and they were both righteous before God. They were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments of God and the ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Those are the two kinds of people we're talking about. If any two of you, husband and wife, were righteous, husband and wife, but spotless, husband and wife, but holy, husband and wife, but sanctified, like this Zacharias and Elizabeth if any two of you agree together like that that here is a righteous husband here is a righteous wife here is a holy husband here is a holy wife here is a sanctified husband here is a sanctified wife those two that couple you can move mountains I said you can move mountains but you know if one is up and the other one is down if one is saved and the other one is so is not saved if one is sanctified and the other one unsanctified if one is holy and the other one unrighteous how are you going to join together no you cannot but it is when the zachariah and the elizabeth when the husband and the wife when they are righteous together there is no counting there is no measure what you can do that kind of power will start in your families in jesus name I'm waiting for a good amen over there. Numbers, Numbers, Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. I'm going to read here from verse 6. Numbers chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 6. It tells us in Numbers chapter 14, two of us, what kind of, two, what two people, this is what he's talking about. Not just, you know, there are some people that will join an ass with a horse. There are some people that will join an eagle with a dog. There are some people, they will join, they will join an eagle with a bat. And the two joining together, there's not much you can do. But it is when two righteous people, two committed people, and two people that you are saturated with scripture. You know the promises of God. You stand upon the promises of God. And if two of such people shall agree together as touch anything great things are going to happen I said great things are going to happen miraculous things are going to happen so supernatural things are going to happen that's what the Lord is telling us look at this numbers chapter 14 I'm looking at verse 6 it says and Joshua said the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunim which were of them that searched the land rent their clothes and they speak unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding great land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into the land and and give it unto us a land where fluid will make and honey only repel not ye against the Lord neither fear ye the people of the land for they are bread for us their defense is departed from them and the Lord and the Lord is with us fear them not when it says if two of you shall agree it's talking about a Caleb and a Joshua the same mind, the same purpose, the same faith, the same understanding about the ability of God. Two people like Caleb and Joshua saying, our God is able. Not that one is having a giant mentality and the other one is having a grass upper mentality. It will not work. But when both of them, you cast out that grass upper mentality and you say, I believe the Lord because the Lord has given us the promise. Like a Caleb, like a Joshua, a Joshua and a Caleb. If a Caleb will join with a Joshua, then he says, if two of you like that will agree as touching anything the Lord will do it for us he will do it in Jesus name 
two like Elizabeth and Zacharias, two like Caleb and Joshua. Let's move on. In Ruth chapter one, when it says two, hey, this is what the Lord is saying. You know, there are some people they're looking for a prayer partner, and they say they quote the promise of God. If two of you shall agree as touching anything, one doesn't have scripture, the other one knows a little bit of scripture. One is saturated with the power of the Spirit of God, the other one is saturated with the ideas of the world. One is heavenly minded, the other one is worldly minded. Unity doesn't work that way, faith doesn't work that way. But one is heavenly, the other one is heavenly. One is holy, the other one is righteous. One is godly, the other one is purified. And it is when those two people are joined together, Zechariah and Elizabeth and Caleb and Joshua and Ruth and Naomi Ruth and Naomi when you're joined together like that and you have that same doctrine look at Ruth chapter 1 in Ruth chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 16 Ruth chapter 1 we're looking at it from verse 16 you see when this occurs there's going to be a manifestation of the power of God, a kind of power that will never fail, and a kind of prayer that will never fail. The time has come, it will happen in Jesus' name. You know, we were talking about unity before, but some people think that, you know, when there's unity, it just means superficial unity. It is not deep in the heart. It is not in your blood. It's not in your face. It's not in your mind. It's not in your brain. It's not in, but something that saturates you, that you know the Lord has brought you to be united with the body of Christ. And then two people like that, I believe that something we're in for something this year. I said we are in for something this year and the dawn of great explosive power in the lives of people of God in Jesus. Ruth chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 16 and says, And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where, thou, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. He says, where thou diest, I will die. And there will I be buried. And the Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death but thee and me. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. That's the kind of unity the Lord is calling us to. If you are going to see mountains moving away every time, mountain moving away every time, like a Naomi that said, You're free to go back, you're free to follow the example of Opa. And then Ruth said, Why are you telling me, entreat me to go back from you? I'm going to stay with you and lord with you and dwell with you and abide with you all the days of my life. I count the cause. Whatever I gain, whatever I lose, whatever I possess, what I dispossess, I'm going to be with you ever. It is that kind of commitment, that kind of unity between Naomi and Ruth that brings the united power of the glory of God in our midst. And I pray that God will give us that mind in Jesus' name. You know, there are some people like Opa, when they go in, it's good. There are people like Opa, when the cross is not too much. There are people like Opa, when the cross is not too heavy. There's people like Opa, when it appears that everything might be all right. There are people like Opa, when we're seeing the land of Moab, in a foreign land, that they will say all right. But if we say go back to Bethel, go back to the land of promise and go back to the land of the bible and go back to the land where the lord blessed us originally let's go back to Bethel, a land of consecration a land of commitment a land of holiness a land of righteousness 